Welcome to the Rock the Stage Show. Each week, international media expert Rich Bontrager has in-depth and personal conversations with celebrities, top leaders, authors, speakers, and media professionals. Now, from the Rock the Stage studios, here's your host, the Trigger, Rich Bontrager. Welcome back, Sunday night, and we are back once again for an amazing show. And as it says in the introduction, it's always unscripted. It's lots of fun. You never know where the conversations are go. We always love to be here every Sunday night. Don't forget, add your comments, your questions, as we have the Sunday night premiere party. And you can drop that in there, and we will chat back and forth and have a good time. Uh, tonight, we're going to go to one of my favorite places in all the world, right smack dabble in the middle of the United States of America, home of the Colorado Rockies. Now, the Denver football team, we're not going to talk about that right now, okay? But we are going to talk about the Rockies, a beautiful time there. We're going to go to Denver tonight for a really, really beautiful show. And we're going to get into a fun conversation tonight because there's this mindset out there. And I want to challenge a little bit during our discussion tonight. The mindset is that business and media, it's this crazy practice of stick into your niche, find your niche, stick into that. Don't do too many things. Be in one place. Be in one lane. Now, for some people that are high performance, high performance people seem to have that gift, that ability to do multiple things at once. For some people, it's hard to say, I do one thing and that's it because they want to use their creative energy. They want to do multiple things. Tonight, we're going to get into a little bit about what's it like because we have a guest that really kicks butt in this area. They do amazing things in multiple areas. It's all creative, but it's also about having an open mindset. And maybe seeing what new doors pop up. And when you do multiple things, they're interconnected, but they're multiple things. So we're getting into a great common conversation tonight about open-mindedness, making open doors come your way. Merrick Khan is an entrepreneur, keynote speaker, author, emotional intelligence expert. She's a certified speaker professional, a CSP, a playwright, producer, actor, comedian, a Peloton addict. I think maybe we might start with that tonight. And a mom. And she also says, not necessarily always in that order. Let's welcome Merrick Khan from Denver, Colorado to rock the stage tonight. Hey, Rich. How are you? <laughs> it's great to have you with us. And I like that you add in the Peloton. We see the commercials. People, Some people love it. And some people now use it as a coat rack. What are you doing with your Peloton? <laughs> I love it. I am on my Peloton every day. I love it because... It's never boring. It's uh, they've done a great job. I mean, their instructors are top notch, but they've done a great job of making it like really a community. I don't get paid for uh, promoting Peloton, but um, I I love it because I can ride with my cousin in Chicago, and we can choose to do the same ride, and we kind of egg each other on a little bit. But you know, it, it keeps it interesting, and uh, and my my boyfriend really likes the results of my Peloton workout. Well, so. there, there, there we go. There's always the good perks on the side. I was thinking, you know, when I lived in Denver, my office window went right out 20 minutes from the foothills. I was thinking you'd be on your bike just looking at the Rockies and they'd forget about everybody else. I got the best scene in the world. Yeah, that's that's nice. But uh, I actually like they have the, an outdoor section so I can um, I can go on a power walk and have an instructor in my ear and listen to the music that they play. And I just I go and I and I walk in my beautiful surroundings here in Denver. So yeah, it's nice. I, I have fun with it. There you are. You you are, you are multifaceted right away. Out, out of the way, you can change things up. I am interested. You've done so many different things that I read in the introduction here. Yeah, but busy. <laughs> what gives you the ability, the insight to juggle all those plates and do it at the level? Because you are killing it. Well, thank you. I am killing it. Uh, where's my <laughs> mic? I need to drop it. Um, you know, I, I think there's, there's, uh, so when you say I'm playing in multiple lanes, I'm on keynote stages. I do a one woman theater show and I perform as a stand up comedian, uh, professionally touring the, the country. Um, and so essentially there's some similarities, right? It's not like I'm a, I'm a comedian and an engineer, you know, <laughs> like I'm, I'm not, you know, curing cancer. That would be cool. That'd be really cool. Though. Like I'm not doing so many disparate things, but I, I like to say I, I get to make people laugh and I get to inspire them to open their minds, to open new doors in whatever is important to them. And I do that in different ways on three different types of stages. So if you were to, well, my comedy stuff is 
is pure comedy. So uh, you might learn a few things or open your mind into doing about dating and relationships. Yeah. I know that, that that's a big part of it. And yeah. family dynamics. Exactly. But, but my, my underlying uh, premise is uh, well, two things. First is laughter lightens the load you hold. And mm. I believe that, you know, in any, in any life, uh, a little stress must fall. And we, you know, how we deal with the stressors at work or in business, um, you know, the, the more we can laugh and lighten up about the things that are challenging us, the more you can hold. So if you think about it, uh, if something is light, you can hold more of them, right? Yes. Yeah. So if you're overwhelmed and, and where things are heavy and there's like, oh my gosh, there's so many things, you know, there's, there's the weight of the world on my shoulders, all of those descriptors sound heavy. And so if you can use laughter to lighten the load, to uh, to give yourself a little bit of space to, con to, to be open to new possibilities to solve the challenges that are causing you frustration, well, the more, uh, the more solutions you have to problems, the more confidence you have that the problem will get solved. And the more confidence you have, in finding a solution, the more confident everybody else around you can be. So laughter is not just this, oh, that would be nice. You know, it's really important in business and in life and anywhere that you're feeling stressed. Well, it's kind of interesting. Because I've never connected the laughter with confidence, but you just did very well. At the end of 2023, I got a lot of calls from some people you may know as well. <laughs> we have a connection there. But it was very interesting. You talk about lack of confidence. 2023 sucked the lifeblood of confidence out of that. Mm -hmm. 2024, I've done several shows interviewing international speakers and leaders about humor, laughter, love, joy, Good. Good. emotional connectivity, which you were just talking about. And there seems to be this hunger and shift. And you're doing a great job of connecting the two, I think. The way you just described it, you're bringing all the professional side, but the joy and the laughter and the comedy comes into it. Was that natural for you? Was that a learned thing or how did you fall into that? I, I think people around me would tell you that I've always been a naturally funny person. Um, but I didn't, I didn't understand the mechanics of humor and use be, the ability to use it as a deliberate tool. Uh, so what I mean by that was in, in 2014, I took a stand-up comedy workshop with a professional 30-plus uh, year comedy stand-up veteran, and, uh, and I learned the mechanics of, of writing a tight joke, and I learned to, uh, I learned to really think l like a comedian. You know, there are certain questions that a comedian asks themselves about just daily observations or personal, you know, situations. And, and those questions, they're not, they're not, you know, they're not like top secrets, sort of yeah. like what's embarrassing about that? What's unusual about that? What, what's funny about that? Um, you know, if you, I learned to be an observer of why, mm. what I was observing. And at that time in my personal life, my, my marriage was on the rocks and it was not funny. <laughs> it was, yeah. it was hard. It was really difficult. And, um, and so when I would journal and I'm a avid journal writer, um, I would be writing about the frustrations and, and how upset I was and woe is me and all of that drama. And then I started asking myself, well, that's interesting. Why am I observe? What am I observing about that? And I'll let me give you a, a specific example. Oh yeah, please. So I remember writing in my journal about, uh, you know, I was going through my divorce process, and I literally said something like, "I'm sure this will be smooth. Like we really are committed to an amicable divorce." And all of a sudden, these words pop off the page, and I go, "I think I have optimistic personality disorder." <laughs> And it was just like, it hit me. And I thought, why in the world would I think my divorce would go smooth when my marriage was such a train wreck? Like, who thinks like that? That is insane. <laughs> and so instead of looking at it like, you know, he's the problem, I kind of flipped it. And I was like, I think I'm the problem here. Like, I legitimately think this is going to be smooth. And it wasn't. Um, but that phrase, optimistic personality disorder, yeah. led me to a series of jokes 
it yeah. happens that as an emotional intelligence certified expert, um, <laughs> I work a lot with optimism and the mm -hmm. balance of reality testing. And I do that in my business work, but I started to, you know, write comedy about that. Right. And then it infused its way into my theater show. And now I've, I renamed my theater show. I've renamed it a couple of times, um, but I'm now calling it optimistic personality disorder because that is essentially my life. <laughs> I love that. How you just told us how it weave and wove and everything else, because I've had several comics on that, that, that have talked about this, but part of it is one guy particularly says, I cannot tell you how I do this. It's innate. It just kind of comes out of me. I see things and it, turns upside down or turns to the right in my mind and I have a joke. Hmm. And I'm like, so this is not like you're looking for, you're, 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 you're squeezing the punchline. He goes, no, if I squeeze the punchline, it's dead. It's got to be this thing that I know just falls in my lap, which that sounds kind of how it is for you. It just kind of has morphed into, you see through a different lens. You know, I would say there are some jokes that have just fallen to me by the grace of God or whatever you want to say. Uh, they you know, fall, fell from the heaven and it, then they work every time. And I'm always grateful for those nuggets of, of wisdom that land for me easily. Yeah. Uh, I would say most of my uh, comedy set has not occurred that way. Uh, I, I work very hard to do a lot of writing. The, what people don't see, I mean, a good, stand up comic you're supposed to watch them on on you know on the stage or on screen yeah. and think you know god they make that look easy like anybody could do that <laughs> what you don't see is the endless hours of of writing and never knowing whether what you're writing is going to amount to anything that's going to be useful or funny and so my process is i write and write and write about any old thing and then I will review my writing and just see if there's anything that just sort of pops off the page. I'll circle that or highlight it. And then I'll do some writing specifically about that. And, and so I'm constantly mining my life, my observations, um, because those are the things that no other comedian can, can duplicate, right? My right. take on something. And I try to stay away from the typical, you know, scenarios that have already been done. Um, but you know, it's part of the human experience, but, um, but the, I think the real magic is in, you know, your view of something personal that yeah. when you share that with an audience, um, and I do that in my, on all three of my stages, um, <laughs> you know, it, it's, it's your unique viewpoint of that that gives them another possibility of how to look at their own views. So I know you speak about your father. I know you speak about family dynamics. By the way, some of your sets are hilarious. I've seen it. Uh, it's great. But I'm curious because you do have this multifaceted career that does overlap. Where did you begin? Was it the speaking side? Was it on the professional like leadership nurturing? Was it on this? other area? Was it acting? Where did you begin and then blossom everything else around it? Well, it's interesting. And, um, you know, when I wrote my one woman theater show, I wrote it as a celebration of my 50th birthday. And then the idea was to write 50 minutes of stand-up comedy for my 50th birthday, rent a bar, stand with her with a microphone and, and just tell jokes. Yeah. Um, it ended up being sets and costume changes and this whole elaborate thing, a storyline. And it, it's, it's a, it's a show. Um, and so in writing that, what I discovered is that I have been on a journey back to who I've always been. There was a period of time. I just sort of lost my way, um, <clears throat> for a number of reasons. Uh, and, and so the journey back to who I've always been, so where did it start? I was on stages from the very first moment that I could be on a stage, right? <laughs> I was literally a Gerber baby model, uh, you know. Really? Uh, yep, yep. And I was in all the, you know, school shows and the choirs. Like, if there was a stage, I was on it. Cheerleading, I was in the front, right? Like, everything. I was a figure skater. Like, give me a stage, ice 
you know, <laughs> the auditorium. Like microphone, you're there. I, it didn't matter. I, I was in front of people. Um, my career started in a training capacity. So that's where I, I started as a trainer doing mm -hmm. smaller workshops. Then I was offered opportunities to do keynotes and bigger stages, um, more of a performance than a training. And, and I just observed like, Oh, what do I like about this? What do I like about that? Um, like I said, stand up came in 2014. Mm -hmm. I wrote my show in 2019. So the, getting on stage as a playwright, producer, perf actor um, is is sort of newer in my career, you know, pathway, but essentially it's where I started. So I, again, creating your own play, which we're going to drive deeper into here in a little bit, but just a little teaser for this. You wrote, direct, and produced yourself. Yes. A lot of people that I've talked to have said, I don't want to direct myself. I don't want to spend the time going from this mindset to that mindset to go to think of the, the action, the set, the flavor. I want someone else to watch that, but you had to watch yourself, figure this out, practice it, and then say, Oh, wait, there's a better way to do this. What was that well, like for you to get into that mindset of directing yourself? Well, to be fair, I do not give myself a director credit. Oh. Uh, I, I have uh, three, professional directors that I have worked with uh, to really continue to evolve this production. Um, I have a, also a, a, a co-writer on this project, okay. the incredibly talented Karen Ruth White. Um, uh, I've worked with uh, Stacey Peterson and Carol Montgomery, both stand-up comedians. Yep. Um, and, uh, and then my dad. My dad is a fantastic very creative director, um, directed many, many shows in uh, and throughout his life. And, and so I was blessed to have a, a director I could hire pretty cheap. Um, <laughs> Dad, you want coffee and donuts? Yeah. Brownies yeah something, tonight. Like that, something like that. So you're also a mother. And you, you are really juggling a lot. What's the secret to not hitting splat the wall? And keeping your head sane and juggling all this because I watch, I listen, I see what you're doing out there. It's very, it seems very controlled, planned, but you're also very active. Mm. What's about that work-life balance thing for you? How does that work um, out? Well, I mean, it's it's pretty easy. I stopped feeding my kid a long time ago. <laughs> um, you know, like he's just that helps. You know, like here's pop tarts, figure it out. Um, no. <laughs> uh, so fortunately, I mean, I have world's most amazing son. Uh, well, I mean, my dad has most amazing daughter. My parents actually did a great job with me, but other than that, um, yeah, my son is amazing. He's going to be 21 in like a month. And, uh, so he's, let's just call him he's pretty baked, right? Like he's not, I don't mean baked in the pot sense. He's, you know, he's, he's his ma own man at this yeah. point. So I'm not, it doesn't take a lot of my mothering time. Although you're not doing soccer and baseball and football all nope. at one time. I'm done with all of the, the, you know, 16 and driver's license, <laughs> beautiful time of my life. Um, so, so that's, he's kind of on his own at this point. I'm not juggling that as well. Right. Although, um, you know, there's always parenting is never done. And so there's always something, <laughs> Um, you know, I, I think that I learned very early in my career, uh, like all of us, prioritizing and setting your goals and making your plan to reach your goals and yada, yada. What's been interesting for me lately is that uh, for my whole career, I've really I've really had a, a, a sales training, consulting, speaking business. So the theater and the comedy part are, are still new in the grand scheme of things. And I'm, I'm having to adapt my own way of thinking and the way that I run my calendar um, from a performer perspective, as opposed to someone who's constantly in sales mode. And so that's been a little bit of an interesting change. Um, you know, planning a tour, uh, you know, leading up to doing this performance. I just mm -hmm. performed um, last week <laughs> on a stage. <laughs> like, wow, is that last week? So which and, one's on the bus for you now? 
Is it the comedy that's driving the bus? Is is is, is, the, is it the keynote speaker driving the bus? Is, is it what? Which one's driving and which one's kind of? Um, yeah, that's a great question. So yeah. I'll answer that. Um, general. So keynote speaking still pays the best, and um, and I I I love it. And I'm damn good at it, and you know so I when I get a speaking event and they'll book, you know, still fairly, you know, in advance, Yep. like let's say I had 90 days. Right. So, um, so as soon as I book a, a keynote event and my client is paying me to be wherever their event is, yeah. then I will look in the near vicinity to see if there's a theater that would be appropriate and available. I always do my theater show after my business event. So yeah. focus on the paid work first. And then I will look and see, can I, and this is exactly what happened last week. So I did a, I was in St. Louis for a client. I did a keynote on uh, Wednesday afternoon. And then on Thursday night, I did my theater show um, within half an hour of where that client event was. And so I figure I'm already there. Uh, it's just a, it's just one other stage. And, and then my, you know, I have marketing folks that kind of help put the ads together and, and sell the tickets to put the butts in seats. And so all I'm doing is just getting myself back into a little bit of rehearsal mode. So that's, that's one way. And now I'm, I'm in a position where I can take every, every time I get on an airplane, I want to do at least two different kinds of events. And so the other way that I do that, if, if I'm not doing my own theater show, um, I perform with a stand-up comedy group called Moms Unhinged, momsunhinged.com. <laughs> and we are a group of more than 40 moms, comedians, and most of our audiences, we're, we're doing shows, we're doing about 25 different shows a month reaching 4,000 different mothers wait, every wait, wait, month. Wait wait, 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 wait. Say that number again. Yeah, 25 shows a month. Now, there's a cast of about 40 of us. Right. So there's four performers on each show. So we can have multiple shows going the same night and in simultaneously in different cities. Tag and, team comedians. That's yeah. a great way to do it. <laughs> it's it's a genius model and the um uh the brains behind the operation is my my good friend Andrea Marie, um brilliant comedian, brilliant businesswoman, exceptional marketer and she's really created opportunities for so many of us comedians and just bring joy to so many audiences. So I approached her and I, you know, I'm looking at what we're doing and 4,000 mothers every month. And I just looked at her and I said, we are completely missing the boat. We should be selling sponsorships for our shows and getting product to, you know, give away and prizes and make it a, an event. And, and she's like, yeah, you know what? I'm, I'm kind of swamped with all this. Why don't you take on that? And I'm like, great. I am now the director of partnerships for Moms Unhinged. And yeah, I had uh, two meetings this week on talking to potential national sponsors and brands that would love. And they're not only getting in front of of 4,000 moms, they're getting in front of 4,000 moms in a good mood, Rich. That's a good thing. <laughs> so, so, yeah. So I'm that's excited about that. that. That's a genius model. And from what you were talking about earlier, you, when you fly in, you do your speaking gig, but you go, potentially scout out an acting gig for those, for those that don't know, that's an old trick. The speaker has done for years, but you took brought it into the acting, but you book one major gig and you look around for another company, uh, maybe a workshop because then you get a mini vacation out of it and they pay for everything. One plane ticket, yep. one in and out, and then you add the other fun, but you've done that with the acting. Yeah. That's brilliant. Thank you. Yeah. And, and it's nice because, you know, just from a financial standpoint, you know, if my travel's already paid, that's less revenue that the show has to do. Um, so, and you know, so there's, 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 you know, logistics and, and whatever, but I'm, I'm, uh, I'm figuring it out. We're still fairly early in terms of touring that show. Um, but I'm now getting a sense of, you know, the right kind of venue, the right size, the right location, you know, it's not uh, my audience is more of a suburban audience, not necessarily a downtown city feel. And, you know, I, the more I do it, the more I learn. And, 
you know, the, the better it goes. I mean, in a perfect world, I do a keynote, my theater show, and a mom's unhinged show. Oh, the trifecta. That's the trifecta. I mean, uh, boom. Mind blowing. Yeah. Now let's talk about the show because you've got a one person comedy show that we've been talking about. You've gotten rave reviews on this, by the way. Congratulations. You wrote. Thanks. And you perform, you've done everything to make this a hit. Now, I did read one review that came out and saying, this show is a show that belongs on Broadway. Yes. Mic drop there, folks. Let me tell you, that's really cool because <laughs> it's you, multiple parts, costume changes, character changes. Now, how do you respond to that when you hear, now, by, by the way, it's called She Who Laughs Last. Well, I just changed it. The new title know. is, yes, the new title is Optimistic Personality Disorder. So, so, so you really did change it because I really did change everything it. I've read has been that. So, okay, this That's, is live. Yeah. It's updated. It's unscripted. It's I, I literally changed it like last week and I haven't even updated my own website. So you are not incorrect with your information. That is all on me. See, I just, I'm so optimistic. I figured you already knew that. That's why I love doing this because you never know what's coming. And so, so, okay. <laughs> give us the proper name again. Optimistic personality disorder. That will always be in the notes, the links and everything else. But tell us a little bit about with, without giving away all the golden nuggets, but tell us a little bit about what this is because you are multiple personalities, characters, whatever you want to call them doing this all by yourself. Well, let's, let's, uh, let's not give me multiple personalities, Rich. I don't know. <laughs> that sounds a little creepy. Um, basically, uh, it's my life story as told through the lens of comedy. The, that sounds a little narcissistic. Um, my point is, it's not my life story that matters. It's the fact that anybody in my audience has experienced the ups and downs of life. And the way that you tell your own story makes a difference in how your future is going to play out. And so the premise there is, you know, can you rewrite your past and if you did, would that rewire your future? And so an audience gets to take the journey of my life story from, you know, little kid to my 50th birthday. And, you know, you'll you'll learn everything you need to know about me from childhood illness to divorcing a narcissist to dating an A-list actor to all of it. And, uh, you know, it's a it's a fun story. There's parts that you, everybody can relate to. I've had people that are just like me saying, oh my gosh, I related to every part of it. And then I have people that are have grown up completely opposite of my experience. We have no commonalities in the actual events of the story, yeah. but they could relate to the way I was feeling in different parts of my life. And they could relate to... Um, to the the roller coaster ride that it was and well, it's, so it's 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 50 relevant. years of life squeezed into 67 minutes <laughs> yes that is exactly right yeah um and costume changes and everything else so you're you're moving you are on yeah it's uh and and all of it is happening in front of the audience so it's a very fluid it's one act um, I always do a, a talk back is what it is uh, with the audience, which nice. were, remember where the Carol Burnett show. Where oh, no, I was just going to go there. That's exactly yeah. where I was going. Yeah. So she used to do that before her show. I do it after my at the end of my show because no one knows who I am. That's OK. Um, but I but I've I get a chance to talk to the audience. We put the stage light, the house lights up and I say, all right, you've heard my entire story. Um, what questions do you have about life or the the playwright or the producing or you know how this all came about or any aspect of the story and people have been asking me the most fascinating questions <laughs> um and it's just a it's fun it's we just really get a chance to know each other and when i did the show last week in st louis um it was a smaller audience it was a smaller venue um but you know, standing ovation and people asked me for my autograph, Rich. I was like, what is happening? Like, you know, 
she's like, can I have your autograph? And I'm like, I don't, I don't even have a pen. Cause that is just not something that people have asked me for, but it was, it was nice. It's, it's validating for sure. So how much of this goes back to that open-mindedness? Because you, you started here, you've gone here. Are, are you still open-minded for anything is possible? Where are you going next? What are you going to do? Are, are you done being a creative? Oh, I don't think I'll ever be done. I've already, uh, I'm already masterminding the musical version of my show. Um, <laughs> so there's that, although I don't sing. So, um, you know, we'll have to see, but I, I think I, you know some people that could help you out though, probably. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it's funny because my real vision, I, my, my long-term plan, what I would love more than anything is to see this show, um, I'd love to see it licensed and performed by other people. Like I'd love to be in the back of the house and watch somebody, you know, somebody else playing me. Right. Because <laughs> that would oh, be oh, okay. That would be bananas. But I, you know, I'd love to see it go to Broadway. I don't know. That's that seems like the biggest dream ever. But um, yeah, I, I've already started writing some ideas about the next show that would follow it. Um, there's uh so right now the what i'm really working on is taking that show and developing it in two different channels so one oh. is a half day program called the confidence and comedy bash i've done it once in that format in charlotte and i'm doing it again in october october 10th in denver yep. and that format it's it's a half day. It's really promoted for um, for women, but it you know it's not exclusive to women. But it's it's a it's a nice audience for that. You and mean so this thing right here? Do you mean that thing yes, right there? Yes, That's the yes. one. Oh, very good. I love the graphic. Yes, the confidence and comedy bash. So what that is is it's it's my theater show uh, to start, and then it's a net, little networking section, and then um, at the afterwards. It's the talk back so people can ask a little bit of the questions. And then it's a confidence workshop because the whole show is is you really get a sense of the the development of of my thinking, my philosophies in life, how humor has helped in different stages. And ultimately what that did was it grew my confidence. I grew me from the inside out and I am taking the audience through an exercise very similar to what I did when I wrote the show. So mm. people get a chance to mine their own life for the stories that taught them the lessons and the laughter that kept them going. And, you know, not so that they necessarily need to perform it as their own show, but there were a lot of, of lessons in confidence building that developed out of writing that piece. And so it's, you know, see it for yourself then let me take you through an exercise so that you can have the same tools for your own life. And, um, and I have a whole, I have a whole master plan. I have so many women that I know um, who are great, funny women, but also very accomplished um, trainers and leaders. And so there's a whole series that I am building for these confidence and comedy workshops so that, you know, I can do this quarterly in Denver with a new cast for each of those events. And I can take that show on the road to other venues um, as this whole package. So that's that's one way, the professional version. And then there's the entertainment two act version of the show, which is the show intact for act one. And then act two after an intermission, because theaters like that, um, would be the talk back and another stand up comedy set by me that would just be, let me catch you up. You know, since That's a full this, variety night that, yeah. that that is Carol Burnett type show stuff. Yeah, so that I'm I'm super excited about that. I haven't done the entertainment version of it just yet. I haven't. Um, I'm still writing the well. <laughs> I, I haven't finished writing it because the next chapter includes um, marrying somebody that I met. Uh, that you know before when bef I met just after my fiftieth birthday. So essentially, the the show timeline ends in 2019 and i i met my my soon i don't know soon to be husband he hasn't officially proposed but it's gonna happen well, I, don't, I mean so you, <laughs> you've you heard it here first. With a cliffhanger you you want to end it with a cliffhanger and say 
to be continued. <laughs> yes. So in the entertainment version, it's like, let me catch you up on the rest of the story. And so that's, that's just a stand up, a straight stand up at a mic. And it's very funny. What I've written so far is very, very funny. Probably some of my best stuff. And I haven't done it on a stage yet. So well, everyone funny. hit the QR code. Make sure you scan <laughs> this. This is in Denver. It's coming up in October. If you hit that, you'll go right to where you need to take care of all the business. Fly out there, drive out there. Don't miss back, it. Back out there. Whatever, whatever you got to do. But you really do <laughs> want to go check this out uh, uh, again. Merit, it's, it's just not like you're having fun. I am having fun. I'm having the time of my life. Absolutely. <laughs> so I started with this idea of open-mindedness, narrowing it down, niching it down. Step back for a second. What energizes you the most with everything you're doing? What's that one thing that right now that is your secret sauce? That is the thing that goes, <gasps> and you are ready to rock. Hmm. Two things. Uh, you have caught me in a moment where I am madly, deeply, wildly in love. And so that I haven't felt like that, not like this. And maybe I, you know, really ever, if I'm honest. Um, so that has been energizing uh, in ways that I've never experienced. Um, so I highly recommend that if, if anybody is, you know, if you're open to that, go find yourself someone to, like that knocks your socks off and go be in love. Um, love it. But I, I think the other thing and probably why uh, I have attracted this incredible man into my life is because I have really learned to um, to lighten up. You know, there were very there were a lot of years where life was heavy and really hard uh, emotionally um, and uh, humor. You know, my my life changed when I got more serious about what's funny and finding the humor. And I, I can't imagine my life without comedy. It's changed everything. Mm. And there won't be a day in my life moving forward where I um, won't be striving to make people laugh. It's, it's what I'm supposed to be doing. Isn't that great when you know what you're supposed to do? Yeah. Yeah. Just, you get up and go for it. Merritt, this has been amazing. Thank you for taking the time to be here tonight. Thank and again, you. where else can they find you? Because I know you got social media. I know you got websites, things like that. Where, where's the best place to zero in and really connect with you? Um, the best place is, you know, I'm, I'm pretty simple. It's Merritt Khan is pretty much everywhere. So if Instagram is your jam, it's Merritt Khan at Instagram. So M-E-R-I-T-K-A-H-N. And uh, it's MerrittCon.com is the website. And when you get there, you'll have your choice of three stages and that'll take you to the, the experience. So if you pick the theater stage or the comedy stage, uh, you can check out all the shows that I'm doing across the country. Um, uh, and the workshops will all be listed as well on there. And, um, you know, I'm on LinkedIn and Facebook. So wherever you like to, to you know, consume, I am there. <laughs> Love it. Thank you, Merritt, for being here with us tonight and Rock the Stage. Appreciate it. Merritt Khan, again, she's doing so many different things. She's an entrepreneur, a keynote speaker, an author, an emotional intelligence expert. We didn't, we didn't get too deep into that, but man, certified speaker, playwright, actor, and you heard the list goes on and on. Amazing stuff. Be sure to check out her play, by the way, if you are available in that Denver area or if, or if you're going on a trip, you got to go check it out. You, got, you really got to go be a part of that. Now, again, Rock the Sages having amazing conversations like this every single weekend. And it's being part by, we have an amazing team behind me. I'm just the voice, the face. But tonight, uh, Robert Sack, my publicist and the guy that helps me wrangle, recruit amazing guests, he's the one that, that, that got this amazing guy on the show. So uh, thanks, Robert, for doing that and for the amazing team that helps us here on Rock the Stage to bring amazing guests, super conversations. Again, every Sunday night, they're always unscripted. They're lots of fun. Again, give us a like, a share, and uh, follow us along. Help us expand the reach as we are now in 17 different countries, Sunday nights, 7 p.m. Eastern time, each and every week. Come on back or join us next week. Until then, I'm the Trigger, Rich Bontrager. We'll see you back here on Rock to Stage Show.